The Break is presented by Browning Trail Cameras. You've got to see this. Closed captioning is brought to you by iScope, smartphone adapter for the outdoors. There are certain people you talk to about hunting and you quickly figure out they know what they're talking about. The first time I talked to Joe Hain about turkey hunting, I could tell he knew a little bit about it. After hunting with him, I could tell he knew a lot about turkey hunting. From what type of call to make at what time, <laughs> to when's the right time to make a move on a bird. Very mature bird. We thought he had us outsmarted. Joe Hain is on point and that's why he's the turkey professor. Some of you are probably wondering how Joe Hain got the name Turkey Professor, so here's a quick story. Joe and I worked together on our real jobs, and we were talking about hunting, and I was telling him what I was doing with the break, and I could tell he was interested in getting involved, and he started talking about turkey hunting. Well, most people, when they talk about hunting, they talk about deer hunting, and that's me. I'm a deer hunter. Well, here he is, Cactus got his name from this point right here, this G2 on his right side. But Joe, he is obsessed with turkey hunting. <laughs> this bird is a smart old bird. I thought to myself, I'm gonna turkey hunt with this guy. So the first time I hunt with Joe, we're driving out and he's telling me about the lay of the land that we're hunting that day, that the birds roost here if it's windy or here if it's calm, they'll pitch down over here or over there, that they'll follow this path to where we're going to set up and so on. Everything played out that day just like he said, but the birds hung out just a little farther than what we'd hoped. Joe knows turkey hunting and he taught me a lot that day. I told him, you are the turkey professor, and then I put it into an episode of The Break, and it stuck. You're welcome, Joe. Now, there still aren't a lot of turkeys around our farm. I'm gonna hunt here on our home farm. I haven't hunted here all year. The fact is, we just don't have that many turkeys here. So I asked Joe to find me a lease up around his neck of the woods where there are a ton of turkeys. He stumbled across a farm, I leased it, and we took my two boys, Drew and Sam, hunting there during youth season. <laughs>
we didn't have much luck at all. We had four jakes coming to the field in front of us and it looked like they were gonna come all the way in, but a four-wheeler drove by and off they went. Not a good Missouri youth season for my boys and not a good start to the new lease. For as long as I can remember, the Browning name has meant something to people in the outdoors. So when I went looking for a trail camera that I could depend on, there was only one name that came to mind, Browning Trail Cameras. So if you're looking for a trail camera that's easy to use, is unbelievably reliable, and takes amazing pictures and videos, there's only one brand that I trust, Browning Trail Cameras. Browning Speed combines advanced fabrics, tailored fit, and innovative camouflage. Hunt harder, faster, and stronger than ever. Speed Killer Clothing. This segment is brought to you by Indian Creek Shooting Systems. Joe Hain, the turkey professor, and I are on a mission for long beards. I'm at my lease, and Joe is with his wife, Erin, on another farm. Got me in the boss box. But I'm glad to be back in the turkey woods. Um, unfortunately, they're not gobbling anywhere around here. If there are any gobblers, they're not gobbling. I heard several this morning, but they were a long ways away. So we'll hopefully we'll get some late morning cruising going on and uh, get a chance here. I'll just call sporadically and, you know, just to let them know we're up here. After a little calling, I've got some jakes coming in hot. They went straight to the hen decoy and violated her in every way possible. Well this went on for 20 minutes or more. I'm getting tired videoing it and homeboy's out of breath. I stop recording and then the Jake starts to strut away off the decoy so I put the camera back on him and I notice a big strutter on the top end of the food plot. Now that is what I've been waiting for.
Well, that was the closest I've ever gotten and not killed. A big strutter just hung out there at 80 yards. And I figured out why he didn't come in. It's because he had a hen with him. She was calling the last 30 minutes of shooting hours and uh, he finally started gobbling with her. I tried to call her in and I think she got within 50 yards of me. But the problem was there was a thicket or a brush pile, I'm sorry, that was separating us. And she walked to the edge of it, and didn't walk around it. And he stayed just down in the woods. So we'll be back in the same spot tomorrow. So hopefully we'll have some better luck. I think the professor is coming with me tomorrow, so maybe he'll bring me some knowledge or luck, whatever it is. Our veterans and those currently serving have selflessly volunteered for duty and risked their lives for the benefit of all Americans. With this in mind, the Neistat Foundation was established to show gratitude for these individuals by providing the opportunity to participate in unbelievable outdoor experiences. Each event we organize is strongly rooted in our four guiding principles, respect, integrity, connecting individuals, and empowerment. Visit Neistat.org to discover how you can create a brighter America for those who have sacrificed so much. So Joe and I were hitting it pretty hard the first week of the season. We were definitely hunting, but I was more interested in scouting for birds because we've got Tom Ranney from Browning Trail Cameras coming in and I wanted to make sure he had a bird to hunt. You see, Tom is turkey hunting in like 10 or 12 other states with all the other shows they sponsor. We need to get him a bird. Our sponsorship could depend on this hunt. Joe, it's all on you, no pressure. So we're hunting at Joe's grandparents' place. He's been hunting it his entire life. There's no piece of ground that Joe knows better than this right here. We've got a gobbler that's hammering after every call, but he's not coming out of the woods. Joe tries the old walk away calling trick to make it sound like the hen's leaving so the gobbler come out of the woods and chase her down. Well, it didn't work and Joe knew what this bird was doing. He was walking a shelf between two ridges. So we sat there and listened for the bird to make his way to the far ridge and we made our move. <laughs> oh, baby! <laughs> Holy smokes! That was awesome! <laughs> that dude! <laughs>
Oh man. Uh, what a southeast uh, Missouri hunt that was. Uh, had that bird trying to get Tom on one here, our Browning guy here, Browning trail cameras. Came into Missouri and we got him on a nice, nice long beard. I've been uh, running this guy for about two years. He run uh, the ridge next to us up and down all morning and uh, finally walked away from him, got him interested, and then we circled him, got in tight, and he just couldn't take it. Come right over top, so great hunt. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. Tom. I thought it was a great hunt. I've, uh, to be honest with you, I, I've been trying to go to several states this year. This is my ninth bird, my eighth state, and this may have been the fastest, coolest hunt so far because I love these rolling hills down here in southeast Missouri. Uh, we came in, we got set up, and the setup was great because the birds were roosted right in front of us. So we had had them covered if they came into the field, if they started walking the ridges, we were in good shape. And I love the way you got real aggressive on the calling, especially when they were hot early, so we really could identify there's bird here, there's bird here, there's bird here. And then when they got down and started working with the hens, uh, you kind of laid off of them a little bit until we found the hot one. And then when you backed off and he started pacing back and forth, I kept telling Derek, I was like, he's gobbling five times and turning around. And because you know the land so well, you knew that, you know, the bird was gonna zigzag back here. And you made the right call at the right time on that when you were like, all right, let's go. And I, you don't have to talk me into going after the turkey. <laughs> so I was like, let's go. We skirted the side of that hill and it was super cool because like we all three got right there. And when he started cresting this hill, like on this high point, I did feel like I needed to shoot when I did. You know, it was kind of cool looking at him. <laughs> when he threw that head up, I was really afraid. If he didn't see that hand, he was like, out yeah. of here. So, yeah. yeah, that was a super great hunt. Beautiful weather today. Got a little southeast Missouri. I appreciate Derek. I appreciate you. All the team that's the break has been great with us. Uh, and I'm super excited about getting this Missouri bird this year. So, thanks a lot, guys. One down, one to go. Yes, sir. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Banks Outdoors is the place that connects family. Oh my God. Thank you. Yeah. That was unreal. This is the place that connects friends. Yeah, bro. bro, you did it. What a phenomenal story. This is the place that brings excitement. Three, bro. <laughs> Most importantly, <laughs> this is the place where memories are made. Buddy. Dad, I will never forget this moment. And why, buddy? Neither will I. Why do I shoot in Indian Creek? He's deader than a hammer. Indian Creek, once again. The break is also brought to you by these fine sponsors. I talked to the professor, he's up in northern Missouri, and uh, he, just, he said the birds aren't working up there either. So uh, it uh, may not be good, so I'm just gonna sit back and sit back in this blind and just wait it out. Hopefully we'll get some uh, gobblers moving through here. I brought the bow and the shotgun today. Um, if I get one of those jakes that up close and they're working the decoys, I'm gonna shoot one with the bow. Um, but I brought the gun as well in case that big gobbler hangs out out there at 40, 50 yards. I'll be able to reach out there with that Indian Creek choke tube. So sit back and wait. I brought my computer so I could do some work in here. So well, that's the beauty of sitting in a blind. I can get caught up. It makes for good day. Oh, well, there was a shot, so somebody seen a bird. It was a tough season for me. I spent a lot of time at my lease and had that one good encounter, but that was it. A big strutter just hung out there at 80 yards while that Jake was on my hen decoy. For Joe, he spent a lot of time guiding for Midwest Custom Hunts and helped four or five of their hunters kill birds. After watching those guys kill, you can bet Joe was ready to smell his own powder burn. Powder just glassed down to the very end of the field. I can see neighbors down there. Probably a bunch of jakes. I've been tormented by jakes this year. Uh, we'll see what happens on this roll here with them. I haven't heard much goblin, so it's good news. I heard a goblin up there. And I uh, hope they'll keep coming in.
down. I uh, had to get the monkey off my back. I've been doing a lot of guiding this year. And called in a bunch of birds this year. Had a heck of a year, really, and the birds haven't been working. So for that bird to come, uh, he, uh, he gobbled his head off. He thought he was something. So I gave him something. <laughs> that old Indian Creek did him. So he's laying right there. Let's go check him out. Well, here he is. Another uh, great Southeast Missouri bird down. Had a great hunt this morning. Uh, happened fast. He was, wasn't 150 yards away from me, maybe 200. He's a little farther now that I'm looking where he was. But uh, he uh, pitched out in the other finger on the field and uh, had to either cross a ravine, which I didn't think was going to happen, or pitch across. And he did. He pitched across with a hen. So put on a show, come strutting in all the way for you. So it was definitely the bird I needed to take. Well, it was a rough year for us where we hunted. I didn't kill a bird, and that was Joe's only kill for 2016. But we both saw a great hunt with Tom. That made all my personal struggles worth it. Now, it was a great year for the guys in next week's episode. They got it done. So be sure to tune in, same place, same time. We'll see you next week. This has been a Hunter's Link production.